batteries. There's a good chance you got these all over your base. Now the one thing we don't have though is a way to determine whether or not that battery is with power or without power. We can set some things up though to kind of, you know, send a duplicate over to run on a wheel or whatever, or run a coal generator, but <clears throat> there would be a much, much better thing to have would be a sensor that lets us know when that battery is out and when we need to charge it. Another thing that would be even better than that is to be able to determine at what percentage that battery level is at, or at least a battery level of or your, your total stack of batteries. And that's one thing that we did right here, even though it's kind of a specific setup. So let me just show you what I got here, right? We got a couple of manual generators and these are turned on or off, ignore the stuff on the left. These are turned on and off based on the battery level that we have up here, right? Because we're turning on and off the duplicate checkpoint. That's okay if you're running, you know, manual generators. And that's one method, you can activate them. However, that really isn't that great. But there is one really cool thing that we can learn from this, and that is if we put batteries up here on, you know, ahead of a power transformer, then we can actually draw this power down, and then this stuff starts to run down. So we can actually stagger the draining of our batteries by using power transformers. That's the first key element. That's the key element that's gonna determine, you know, if I have four batteries set up, right? One down here, go through a transformer, another battery, transformer, battery, transformer. Then we have four different levels. So we can be at maximum charge, or shall we say we can be above 75%, and below it, below 50, and then zero. And we can actually set sensors up for that. And now, as per the sensor, now there's two methods I know of, of how to actually make a sensor that's going to determine whether or not this battery has power or not. Now, if we go back about four weeks or so, Samsonite Dove posted this on my video uh, right here, and he has uh, something that he posted on the forum. And this is how to make a battery sensor based on temperature control. So what this is, it's super creative, is a couple of tiny batteries give off, I guess, whatever, five or two and a half watts worth of heat. And if you put that inside of a vacuum and then drip a little bit of liquid down there, it will increase the temperature of that liquid above the threshold, therefore the sensor is on, telling you that you have power inside of those batteries and then it will drain down. However, I think there's another way to do this and I haven't seen anybody posting this anywhere. So. It actually goes back to my first video I made since the automation upgrade preview came out, and that is this guy over here. Remember this, this little switch I made? This switch runs a pump, and then that pressure moves from one side to the other, and then it flicks on a switch to kind of change the state. So if we actually look on the automation here, this would flip from one side to the other, and then one of these sensors are above or below the actual pressure. Now the thing is, if you take this and you really, really simplify it even more and just cut it in half, what you can do is set this up on a timer so that this pump runs just for a second. So it only moves one puff of air. And then that puff of air moves past one of these Atmos sensors. So we actually move this gas pump down. And that will, for a short moment, increase the amount of pressure that runs across this Atmos sensor, therefore sending a signal out that says active. So if we use both a filter gate and a buffer gate and some AND gates or whatever that we need to do, we can set this thing up on a timer to just run periodically to check whether or not we have power connected to this pump. So that pump would run directly off of one of these batteries. So depending on however many batteries we have running through different power transformers, we can determine where our power level is. And since these little pumps only use about 60 watts, honestly, it is not very much power at the end of the day depending on how often you set up that time cycle. So this is probably the simplest, well, it may be the most simple, I don't know. Let's compare the two methods and see what we come up with. So let's get started. Alrighty, so here we go. In order to set up one of those little sensors, it's super easy, right? We just go up like this. We wanna make sure we have four blocks inside of here because that's how much it takes. What do I have inside of here? Mm, it's natural, that's a lot of natural gas. Let's go ahead and do oxygen, but we're gonna put in kind of a random number to kind of simulate the idea that we, we've built this inside of our base at some point or another. So that's 896 grams. So if I look in ventilation, we now have the mini gas pump, and we'll just drop that in. We're going to throw in a Atmo sensor right there, just like so. And then if we use ventilation, we don't even need a high pressure vent, we could just use 
you know, standard one, and then a little gas pipe. Boop, just like that. So what do we have here? Our current pressure inside of this space is 896. So if I type in 800, let's say 897, and then we go above that, that will turn active, sending an active signal out for a short moment. All right, so time for the automation circuit. Now, I think I got it this time. However, you guys were giving me such a hard time about the XOR gate. Like, it's not pronounced that. It's called XOR, or maybe it's exclusive OR, or like the X, of what I often call it, ZOR. I like the ZOR one. I'll, I'm going to go with ZOR. So welcome to the Zor gate, this guy right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tie this in here because what I, I essentially want to get as far as how I want to operate this pump is I want it to send an active pulse for just a short moment so that it turns on and off and just pumps one chunk of air, right? And I don't want it to pump more than one chunk of air because that would just be wasteful. And, you know, I don't want to waste power for something that is trying to determine whether or not we have power. So. We'll keep it efficient. So I'm going to use the Zor gate, and then I'm going to run it through a filter. All right, so here we go. And then this will essentially just run an active signal. However, what I can do is tie this right back in like that. Yeah, yeah. I know, you're getting impressive. Check, you see that? It was active for a moment, just for a short moment, and then it goes back to standby. <laughs> and then if I flip the switch off, it just turns off battery monitor stage one complete and check this out oh snap we can like hide it i love it when you can hide stuff all right here we go and that one that one and then my little filter gate boom just like that i feel like half of my circuits don't work because i try to fit them in too small of a space but there we go so then i just drag that over there boom ha ah, okay so now I have a sensor over here, right? This is just my pressure Atmo sensor thing. And this is all it uh, needs to do is that if it becomes active, it needs to maintain an active signal for a given amount of time. That is the same amount of time as my filter gate, or maybe a little bit longer. Because what I want this to do is it's going to turn on a generator or generators um, if it ever is off, or shall we say, if it's not activated for enough time, it will turn stuff on. Or I could hook it up in the reverse and whatever, but you get the idea. Essentially, I'm going to solve it with a buffer gate. So, there we go, right? So if this is on, it's going to send that signal, let's say, every 15 seconds. That's kind of reasonable. And then right here, we'll keep this on for 15 seconds. Now, obviously, this does require power to run because it's sensing power. So let me go ahead and put a battery right up there and a little bit of a manual generator right next to it so we can simulate this. Okay, so the other thing I need here is a NOT gate. So that way I can make this active when that sensor is not active. So I just flip it just like so. So then the door, see, it's a more visual way to know whether or not this generator is active or not active. However, if this sensor goes below, just to simulate it, then that generator turns off because we have power. So let's hook it up and actually give it a good old test. All right, so here we go, running a test here. Rowan is gonna run on this thing. It's gonna put some power into that battery. And as we can see here on the automation, this thing's just running around, counting off the seconds. And it's keeping the pump disabled at this point. All right, so when this sensor comes right back around, that should activate this mini gas pump. However, what I saw here, ah, it was not long enough to get any gas to come out of that, you know, that pump was not active for long enough to make it through its animation. So therefore, I didn't get any gas to move over there. So I gotta, I gotta develop this a little bit more. But you know how I'm gonna fix this? Yeah, a buffer gate. That's my fix for everything, though. And here we go again. I've made this so compact. <laughs> I can't get to it. All right, so there we go. Now I've just run to the filter over here. Right back down. I'll just put a little bridge right on over that. Bring this signal wire back up. This will then go over here to the pump so that when we hit the buffer, that will stay active for 
one second. We'll set it for one second. Maybe we can even set it for 0.1, depending on how much gas we move through. I doubt 0.1 will work, though. So this just needs to be one second. See, that was long enough to move a little bit of gas right there, even though we'll have to wait and see what happens here. And that's 12.5 grams of oxygen. Ooh, it's running. Stop running. One second. So that moved a little bit too much gas. But what we should see is this Atmo sensor should go up. See, that is at 890 grams. And there we have it. That Atmo switch flipped to active. However, it won't stay active forever now once this thing goes back down. Okay, so here's the sensor in full working operation here. So this little timer's running, it then turns the pump on for a second, and a little bit of gas moves through. We can actually see that happen. So if we go to the gas overlay, there goes the little bit of gas, and then comes out of the vent, and that will turn this Atmo switch on and off, right? So that's turning on and off. And then the automation sensor here, this thing, once it becomes active, the timer resets on this buffer gate, so it just stays active and then we flip that so that this stuff, you know, our, our manual generator or whatever our generators are, stay off, you know, while there's still power in this thing. So it is really not draining this battery all that fast. It does not use very much power, but if we wanted to save it, obviously we could set this up to be a longer wait time. Right now it's five seconds. If we were to set this up for, I don't know, 30 seconds or so, you could see that it would wait a long time. Obviously though, we'd want this uh, buffer gate up here to remain 30 seconds or more probably 30 you know two at least to be safe so mm, this is really slow but it is running around if we wanted to disable this sensor for whatever reason what I've done is I've added a power shutoff so that forces this mini gas pump to stay off otherwise this signal here will actually end up in one state or the other. So it'll either be completely off, I've seen it also be on as well, depending on you know what happened there. Okay, so here's the situation that I was talking about. If I turned this off while this signal was active, see how this gas pump continuously stays on? So what I need to do is I need to add another device to this, and that is the power shutoff. So therefore, if this switch is off, it's just running a, not a conductive wire, it's running an automation wire to that thing in order to force that little gas pump off. So just like this. So I tell you what, let's go ahead and drain this battery. We'll put a duplicate up here and I'll, I'll show you that it's actually you know straight up working. All right, so here we go. We're about to run out of power. And there we go. So the power's run out. And then this should Go right back to active now. There we go. Boom, it works. But then we get more power inside of it and it you know, deactivates. So what we really want to do is, you know, set this up on a timer so that it can stay active for long enough to charge up the battery. So what you'd want to do is to use another buffer gate up here, but time it out so that you know how much how many kilojoules you have and how long your generators take to fill those batteries up so that you can bring it up to 100% or near 100% before you deactivate it. So now let's go ahead and try the thermal method right here. Okay, so if we look at Saturnus's post right here, uh, I think the same person as Samsonite Dove, what we can see is that we have a couple of, this is all insulated tiles around there and there's gonna be a little bit of liquid down there at the bottom, but it also looks like this is running to a pump that might be moving just a very, very small amount of liquid in order to try to maintain the temperature of that liquid. So he's using a, a liquid cooling solution right here. So, you know, either of these sensors, at least in this setup here, don't use zero power at all. However, I think the main advantage of what we're trying to do here is come up with an absolute zero, you know, power use for detecting the whether or not our we have the power inside of our battery. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so what I've done here is I have made a lot of oxygen inside of this area. Let's say it's a temperature controlled area. You have like a room with very highly controlled AC or you know, relatively controlled. 
what I'm going to try to do is set up that thermal switch, but without any sort of liquid cooling loop or anything like that. So let's try to do this. You know, my own take on that same sensor. Obviously, you can you can play around with this stuff as much as you like. And one of the things that he was saying here is that if you use more than one, you know, battery, you'll create more heat. So therefore, the more heat you have, the bigger the variances in temperature you get, which is probably what we're going to need if we're going to be taking the heat off of these batteries and pumping it into atmosphere, as opposed to some sort of highly controlled liquid temperature thingy. So then I'm going to use, let's say, granite right down here. So that's going to be my conductive medium right here. So this is abyssalite, and that's granite. That's, so that's the only thing that's transferring any sort of temperature between what's up here and what's down here. Inside of here, I'm going to put down let's say four Wolframite tiny batteries. And I'm also gonna put down a thermal switch here. We're gonna go ahead and make it out of gold because we're baller like that. Okay, so other things that were mentioned here was that it works best if this is in a vacuum. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Bring this down to a vacuum. And then we're gonna drop just a little bit of liquid down there. So right now the construction of these little tiny batteries, they're at, well, the temperatures are trying to balance out right now. So you can see this is at 28.4 degrees Celsius. Hopefully we'll get a nice big difference between what's what. All right, so here we go. I've dropped Normeep on here. So I'm, I'm now filling up all of these batteries and therefore I'm producing heat. Heat that's going to heat up that liquid and it's also going to heat up these tiles down here. Now, I'm not sure the tiles are the best idea, mainly because there's a fair amount of mass between the two. But hey, we'll see if it works. So the one thing that was mentioned is that when this setup is first implemented, it takes a little while for things to stabilize. You gotta, you gotta figure out where your min and max are, because it kind of depends on what your cooling medium is and where that's at, and also all of your, your metals and stuff inside of here need to even out. Okay, so there we go. Normeep ran until it was nice and full. And there we go. So I'm gonna drop you back over here. Whoop. Now I realize that I'm not actually following this, you know, exactly, because I'm not using the liquid loop right here. Uh, I'm just trying to come up with a, an extra simplified version based on everything that I've learned from this form post right here. Now don't get me wrong, there might be some more insights in this as far as using liquid to go right back around and, and get it absolutely precise. If this is the method you wanna go through, I recommend you read this and just kind of follow it right down here. But we should be up to temperature, and I think this is going to be good enough for what we're you know, trying to achieve with it, so long as you have this you know, in a, a good area. So this is 41 degrees Celsius right here, fairly close. So we're, we're getting to the point where this is finally going to get up to temperature, which is slightly above ambient temperature. Okay, now one thing about this method is that if you have a lot of batteries, right, and you're just, it's full all the time, this is going to continue to produce more and more heat. So you either have to find a way to kind of soak some of that heat away from it, you know, just so long as these batteries can't continue to go up in temperature. So it's a balance game. But I'm gonna start draining some battery, you know, some juice out of this, which is really how this should be used. It should be used in such a fashion that your, your you're draining the power out of it. So here we go. That's not what I want. This is what I want right here. Just a, no, gosh darn it. So now we're draining power out of these tiny batteries. You can see the power level going down. We've now reached the point here where we're above 46.1 degrees Celsius. So at this point, what we should see is that when the power draws out of these tiny batteries, which we will see that happen, that the temperature should start to go back down because the you know, the heat energy that's being generated by these tiny batteries will no longer be there. So if we take a look at the heat production, we can see right there, there's normal operation, then excess produced. So therefore that temperature dropped down and we can see that sensor, it, it went back down below. So let's go ahead and throw a duplicate up there. They're saying that the battery has now reactivated the manual generator. So therefore we need to pump more power into the system. And there we go, it's active again. And then it's deactive. And it's active. And now it's deactive. Active. Deactive. So that looks like it's working really good right there. Pretty simple to set up. 
and it looks like once you get those temperatures just right, you know, it looks like it works out great. So the current, so here's what's up, right? This thing was not active for long enough to charge up enough to actually recharge the large battery. This has to stay active long enough to, you know, fill up your reservoir. So you really have to use a buffer gate here in order to make this work. Otherwise, you know, we just end up with the power averaged over all the batteries. All right, so this thing is cooling off. Cooling off slowly. <laughs> Mind you, maybe I gotta increase the temperature. Maybe I just made too much. So what we might wanna do here is use the same sort of trick with the power that we did last time, and that's using a power transformer to separate the juice we have in here as compared to the juice we have outside. The only thing is that really, you know, then you don't have tiny batteries but you would at least charge the battery downstream first. So let's use a power transformer here, right? So we'll run to that, run to the battery, run to the doors. So there we go. Okay, so now we're charging up this battery first before we charge up the tiny battery. Okay, so we're draining the power out of these tiny batteries, and then we'll start sucking away from this large battery now once those run out. And at that point, that should drop that thermal sensor back down. So there you have it guys, two different methods in order to determine whether or not you have power inside of your battery. I also showed you that if you put a battery on the large side of the power transformer that that will drain first, so therefore you can stagger that out, that out and put as many sensors as you want to determine where your power level is on your entire grid of, you know, battery capacity. So that's pretty neat. Up here is a very creative method and it also works without a lot of the automation tools even though you have to kind of use some of them nowadays, but this is a very creative method and it, it blew me away when I first saw this. However, it is a little bit of finicky. You really got to set up that thermal temperatures just right and what I'm doing here may not be the exact right method, but it's pretty awesome in that it doesn't require any power in order to determine whether or not you have power inside of that battery or not. Down here is a powered method. However, you can set it up to where it doesn't really use much power at all. Running every 60 seconds or so, it should consume around 600 joules. So that's just 600 watts for one second. So if you're running any amount of automated generators, you're going to be producing a lot more power than what you're using in order to determine whether or not you have power inside of those batteries. So you will save power by using either of these methods because you know, you're not over powering your generators. Absolutely awesome. I'm looking forward to seeing what we can build inside of a lot of these bases using some sort of sensor to determine what our power level is, you know, and stop wasting resources. So there we have it. Until we get a sensor that is is going to determine whether or not we have power inside of one of these batteries or not, or gives us some sort of power level thing, this is about the best we can do here. So hopefully you guys found this video somewhat helpful, helpful or enjoyable. Let me know down there in the comment section below if you also have some other crazy ideas. If I've earned your subscription, then thank you so much for that. Before you leave, I want to show you one of the products that I've been using here for the last month or so, mostly because YouTube keeps demonetizing my videos and I need to promote something in order to potentially generate some revenue and I'm also exploring some other options here. So this is the ear pads from Brainwaves. I've been using this for about the last month and I liked them so much I could put them on both of my headsets because my Razer Black Shark headphones, look, I mean that's the ear pads I was dealing with and then these are super crusty hard for the, you know, my, my current MX30s which this was uncomfortable as far as glasses. These guys are super comfortable. You can check them out over here. I'm running the, the hybrid so it's both the sort of velour, you know, nice wearable stuff. And it also has the leather on the sides in order to keep in some of that base. At least that's what people are saying right there. I like them, they work really good. So if you're in the need for, or in the market, I guess, for some new ear pads, I highly recommend these. And I have put a link down there in the description below. Thanks for hearing me out on that. Stay awesome guys, have a great day. Peace. Brothgar, out. <laughs>